Welcome to Age Potential TV. I'm Lori Campbell, your host, gerontologist, and advocate of your best life, here to introduce you to an emerging trend called Age Potential. Here's to living out your age potential. Age potential is all about living out one's potential at every age and stage in life. To do this, we must learn to be our own best caretaker. Lynette Crane, a profiled thriver in my book, Awaken Your Age Potential, is here to share her firsthand experience and the consequences she incurred by putting herself temporarily on the back burner while caretaking for two older adults. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me, Laurie. Lynette, you have always been a person who's value, valued your health and took responsibility for that. But there was a time in your life where you did put yourself on the back burner. Can you talk about that time and what, brought, what life experiences brought you there and what you learned from that? Yes, well, what happened was that, first of all, I moved from my home of 37 years in California back to my hometown of Minneapolis. Now, if you've ever lived in a house for 37 years, you know how much junk you can accumulate, as well as memories. So I left that behind after a lot of hard work and came home. When I got here, my best friend in California who'd had a head injury was in danger of becoming homeless. And so I invited her to come back and live with me. And she arrived with two truckloads worth of belongings and I found out fairly quickly she had become a hoarder. She started to turn my home into a garbage dump. I foolishly bought a larger home thinking it would accommodate all her stuff, so now I was in debt. At the same time, my elderly aunt, aged 93 in another state, went into her final decline. She had made me her power of attorney, and so I got many phone calls and I had to go back and forth and clean out her house, which had about 100 years of accumulation in it and deal with relatives from the other side of the family who weren't happy about things. It was all too much, and I fell into what I call the stress whirlpool. Mm. Yes, understandably so. In many ways, we've been socialized um, to believe that self-care is actually selfish. How have you resisted buying into this limiting thinking? Well, I was brought up to be an independent thinker. When I was a child, I remember one of my mother's favorite questions to my sister and myself was, do you want to run with the herd? And we soon learned that the only good answer that we could give her was, no, of course not, because she hated conformity. So I was brought up to be a rather independent thinker. I'm amazed that I relinquished it to the extent that I did during this particular period, but it's because I fell into what I call for the duration thinking. For the duration, we say to ourselves, uh, I won't exercise because I'm too tired. I have this crisis to deal with. And when we stop doing that, we don't rest well and we stop eating well. And it becomes a, a whirlpool out of which we cannot extricate ourselves. And I took a while to figure out how you get out of the stress whirlpool in order to get myself out and now to help clients get out of that same situation. Right. So in other words, any of us could really fall into this if we're not vigilant on our I, health. I think many people mm -hmm. are falling into this because they don't know how to get out of the stress whirlpool. For example, stress makes you crave sugar, fat, and salt. And the more you eat those things, the more you crave them, and you're undermining your health. But until you figure out how to get out of the stress whirlpool, you just really crave those things. Right. Right. So what are the signs that one is neglecting oneself or actually taking care of someone else at the, the expense of their own uh, well-being? I think when you, think you decide that you, you can't find any way out of your problem, you cannot find a solution. And that is uh, an example of what I say, stress makes you stupid. It narrows your perception. You cannot see alternatives. And you start for a long period of time neglecting your health you get into this craving that I described. You have sleep problems. You're just too exhausted to exercise, even though you know intellectually that exercise may give you more energy, but you cannot do it. So that's a very dangerous state to get into, and I recommend that people start by paying attention to their sleep, sure. because if you can get that straightened out, the rest will be easier. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Well, you know, we know that 10% of stress is really comes from the actual event, but 90% of the stress comes from the perception of the event. Elaborate on that. 
Well, as, as I've said, stress makes you stupid. You really don't see any alternatives. Another thing that people don't recognize is much of our stress is actually in the future. What is going to happen as a result of what is happening right now? Even something as simple as being caught in a traffic jam, people will go into anxiety for fear of being late without asking themselves, what do I think will happen to me if I'm late? And what good is it that I'm worrying about it now? I like to say, there's nothing bad that happens that can't be made worse by worrying. Mm -hmm. So in other words, all that preconceived perceptions is really expounding on the stress. Absolutely. Yes, yes. And it's trapping us. Mm -hmm. Well, what tips can you share to help the viewers be their own best caretaker? Focus on very simple things. Focus on getting a really good night's sleep. Look up research if you have to in order to understand how to get a good night's sleep. For example, we often have lights in our bedrooms. It might simply be a cell phone charging or a computer, but those lights can actually disrupt sleep. We have to eliminate all of them. And another thing people have to realize is that sleep does not relax you. Only relaxation relaxes you. If you go to bed tense, you will wake up feeling as if you'd been lifting bricks all that night. Mm. And then you fall into the habit of worrying ahead of time, eating poorly, and all of the other factors that influence stress. But I would always urge people to start with getting a good night's sleep. Well, since you brought up the point about relaxing, what do you do specifically? Could you just share one thing that relaxes you? There are many things, but I like to listen to music and then to meditate before bedtime. But I also advise my clients to keep pleasant things near your bedside table, perhaps loving notes or cards you've gotten or a humor file, something that makes you laugh. Mm -hmm. Then, of course, taking a warm bath, having exercised previously is another great way to get a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. I love those tips. And I, I think you would agree with me that it's just as important, if not more, to really adhere to these during a crisis as well as everyday life. You should really make a habit of thinking of these things first because you cannot be a good caretaker if you're not taking care of yourself. Absolutely. So in what ways has this experience shaped your perception of growing older? Has it, has it changed your view or how you live in any way? I think it's expanded my view of life and consequently my life has expanded. I was retired and was thinking I would relax and do just some fun things for myself. But when I got, really got into the topic, I realized I had a lot more wisdom to share with others. I got excited about it. I started to go out and speak. I started to write. And now that's what I do. And it's given me a real jolt of energy. And goals are even farther beyond my horizon that I had to begin with. So in the long run, I would say that it was a good thing. Mm, interesting. Well, I find you know, how you responded to your heart attack. We've talked about that before, that you actually had a mild heart attack mm -hmm. during this time mm -hmm. of putting yourself temporarily mm -hmm. on that back burner. Um, very inspiring and noteworthy. If anything, you started a business at 72 from this experience and you wrote, recently published an ebook entitled The Confident Introvert. Well, tell us a little bit about these ad new adventures. All right, well, I had been working in the field of stress management. Years ago, I had also created a psych, I college class on the psychology of shyness and self-esteem. And I had always thought to write about it, but it, I kept thinking about it and I thought, who will this appeal to? And I also began to look at my life and how much I had grown since that time. I actually started the class because of a crisis in my life when I realized that shyness had crippled me for years. So I got past that. And as I say, I was going to write this book and I realized I'm no longer shy, but I'm still an introvert and that's important. I came up with the title, The Confident Introvert, looked on the internet to see if anybody would inter be interested and discovered the internet was a buzz with people interested in this topic. So I created the book and have now created a program by the same name to walk people through the same steps that took me from being a shy introverted person without a lot of friends to a confident introverted person who's just surrounded by loving people. I do not have any more toxic people in my life. Everybody in my life is supportive and loving, and I'm just enjoying it. Is that a conscious, intentional choice since you went through all this experience? This oh, absolutely, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. it's, it was a very expansive experience for me, yes. Right. Well, Bruce Lipton, a leading researcher in the science of epigenetics, says, to fully thrive, and I quote, we must not only eliminate the stressors, but also actively seek joyfully, loving, lovingly, fulfilling lives that stimulate growth processes. 
Lynette, that's exactly what you're doing. I find that amazing and wonderfully exciting. I'm so glad you're here with us today and thank you for demonstrating the importance of self-care. Thank you. I continually am amazed how thrivers are living out what research tells us is possible. You can too. Begin being your own best caretaker and expect to thrive. Until next time, remember, if it's going to be, it's up to you. Thank you.